our solar system. The NARC. Our solar system is very compact. We can, you know, with the traditional rockets that we have, we can get across our solar system in, in a couple of years, 10 years. Uh, but traveling to another, to another star uh, might take close to a million years or to another galaxy, uh, you know, a hundred times that. And um, uh, so, so um, there's a lot that we can do in looking for life in very close environments. Now maybe, maybe we haven't, uh, maybe there isn't intelligent life in our solar system yet, but maybe there is, because there's a lot of places that we haven't looked yet. We've looked at Mars, we've sent, you know, between, uh, between the US and India and Japan and Russia and Europe, we've spent, we sent a lot of spacecraft to Mars, uh, upwards of about 50 spacecraft to Mars. And we keep finding out that Mars is dead, so there's no Martians out there waiting to contact us on, on Mars. But there are other places, and uh, uh, let's go to Europa, uh, which is the moon of Jupiter, or we can go to Enceladus, the moon of uh, Saturn. And these have these are water worlds that have an ocean beneath their icy surface. And it could well be that there are uh, that there's life, either intelligent or otherwise, uh, on these bodies, which just hasn't contacted us yet because uh, you know, it's below the ice. It's happy with where it is. It's not trying to get out. <laughs> So I can follow on from from Shantanu. I, I think he makes a good well. He repeats a very good point. You know, Shantanu is a very wise man. He knows to um, quote authority. Um, and, and I think there, I think he's right. And I think we can all think about it without without actually putting ourselves in thinking about science fiction. And that is that we're getting very close to being able to produce self-replicating machines ourselves. So we're getting very close, you know, this gentleman over here, Henry, um, was just involved with the New Horizons spaceship, which went past Pluto. No humans. You sent it off, and it won't be that much longer before we can put a, enough energy or energy um, collecting detectors and uh, more intelligent computers, and we'll be able to send things. So it's actually not far-fetched at all to think about some evidence of life traveling throughout the galaxy, even if it's hard to think about us. So already at the level of technology we are at, you could start imagining that in the not distant future, we can start propagating things through, it, through the galaxy. So it's not actually crazy. And when we say, as I said, one of the things we're doing looking for life is looking for technology similar to our own, or perhaps a little bit more advanced. The thought of it being a little bit more advanced makes Enrico Fermi's statement that much more valid. So, I think that's a good caution. It seems crazy to imagine that there isn't life, but I think we all have to actually say that we don't know. I think Christopher was absolutely correct. It's not something we know. It's something that we hypothesize. But I would also argue that the notion of life is a much easier thing than the notion of intelligent life, even on the Earth. Most of the time on the Earth, the life that was here wasn't life that, you know, was even mammalian or lizard-like. It was bacteria. So this question about life and, 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 and how it relates to us is a tricky one, but I think I just want to say that Chantelou's repetition of Enrique Fermi's paradox is a valid one and should caution us not to expect to see uh, the cantina or whatever you want to call it in the new Star Wars movie anytime soon. To what Chantelou said, I feel that why, why haven't they visited us? So we can look at it two ways. One, they have visited us and we don't know that they have. They have come seeing it was not an interesting place in their mind. Whatever they have to study, they study and they are. That's one possibility. The second one is they also have trillions of places where they can visit. And randomly, they could have landed on other planets, other places. And they must have missed out Earth because Earth is nothing special. If they were searching out uh, a planet to visit, they won't select an ordinary star like a sun. And it has to be, have to be very lucky that they chose this particular one, right? So 
by the probabilistic rules again, they might have missed Kaniya. They might have been visiting or going to other places, looking around bigger stars and bigger planets or whatever. Okay, sir. So, uh, one of the things what it started off with that we, you know, just began exploring the shores of the cosmic ocean. We literally just reached Pluto, right, the new horizon. So we haven't even searched enough ourselves. And uh, typically we are looking for scientific technology similar to ourselves. So there's somebody communicating in another form which we do not recognize. We, we think nothing is being communicated. So it's, uh, I think, it's the, the, the search has just begun. And the technology, we, we still know some kind of technology, but that's not the only kind. And then we actually, we are searching for something which we don't even know what we are searching for, right? We don't even know in what form to expect that life or communication. So we are kind of searching for something which we don't even know about, right? So it's looking at the data at this stage. I would like to ask you to read the audience. Can you read the audience in India as well? 